Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Yelena Zabolotna. I'm working in the laboratory of chemoinformatics here in Strasbourg uh, under the supervision of Professor Varnick and uh, Dr. Dragos Horvat. And today I would like to present you our uh, web based tool, which allows to navigate through the chemical space of ultra large, ultra -large libraries on the multi scale levels. So, of course, all you know is that we have different types of libraries that we need to use in medicinal chemistry, and they all vary in sizes, starting from hundreds of thousands of compounds in natural product database or building blocks collections, uh, going up to billions in, uh, in the virtual collections or in uh, DNA encoded libraries. And we actually need an efficient tools to analyze all of this data and to navigate through the chemical space of those compounds. And those tools need to be, well, first, of course, big data compatible. You need, they need to provide you with an interactive visualization method, so it's going to be easy to analyze and to spot some features of the chemical space, um, analysis of the properties of end activities uh, can be also useful, as well as structural analysis prediction of uh, different act biological activities or properties, and some analog search. There exist some web-based tools for this already. However, they all um, depend on the number of compounds that they actually can show to you. So for example, here Puma uh, can go only to uh, thousands of compounds, and this is the most multifunctional one. Uh, however, when you increase the number of compounds that you want to analyze, the functionality of tools can actually drop. And um, the, worst, the, the most prob problematic features are structural analysis and the predictions of, uh, of uh, different properties and activities. And there, of course, there is a, a tool that, uh, that uses the methodologies that have been presented by Professor Rari previously that go to to very high uh, large chemical spaces. However, again, it allows you only to do some structural analysis and analog search, but you cannot access all the functionalities here. So why is, like, is it like that? So the limitation of those tools are linked to the limitations of, of the methodologies that lie behind them. So uh, most of the tools that allow you to uh, to visualize the chemical space. They work with uh, n-descriptor, uh, n-dimensional descriptor spaces. Uh, so you represent a molecule as a vector, and then you have a high-dimensional dimen chemical space. You want to reduce dimensionality, and you can do this with different methods like principal component analysis, TSNE, SOM, and so on. And those methods actually represent a molecule as a dot. So you have a significant information loss coming from uh, ND to, to just 2D, X, and Y axis here. But GTM allows you to represent a molecule not as a dot on the map, but a, as a distribution of the probabilities of the molecule being assigned to all the uh, points on the map. And most of them are going to be zero probabilities, so you're going to have empty areas. However, you're going to have a peak, some spot here, where you will see where a compound is more probable to go, actually. And this allows you to decrease the information loss during dimen dimension dimensionality reduction. Sorry. So also what is nice that with GTM, you have advantage when you analyze very, high, uh, very large libraries. So if you analyze the libraries, large libraries with PC, PC uh, TSNE, and SOM, you actually have to deal with n objects with n dots in the library but gtm allows you to create to to accumulate responsibilities of all compounds being assigned to different nodes on the map and in such a way you can represent a library as one single vector and then you can analyze the libraries compare them and this is uh, actually simplifies uh, analysis uh, also, uh, GTM allows you to uh, build different type of landscapes. So one map can be colored by different uh, schemes. And the class landscape, for example, if we have classes of actives and inactive compounds, we can uh, create activity landscape where we can spot the, the different ratio of different classes on the map. And for property landscapes, for example, we can 
uh, color according to molecular weight distribution, and we're going to see the average property of, uh, of compounds uh, residing in each area. So it also allows, like both of those uh, landscapes allow you to uh, use them as a predictive model for class uh, or, uh, or property uh, predictions. And how does it work? So first we need to project new molecules on the map, and then according to the area where do they drop, we can actually uh, predict their activity. So uh, looking at the activity of the closest neighbors on the map, and like that, we're gonna say if, if compound goes to the area where the most uh, compounds have labeled inactive, it's gonna be uh, count as inactives and vice versa. And if it goes to the uh, empty area, it's gonna be count as out of applicability domain because there is simply no training molecules in there. So one map can be used to predict several activities at the same time. So uh, there is no need to rebuild a map and uh, the maps that we are using actually can predict simultaneously more than around 750 biological targets from Campbell. GTM can be used for the library's comparison. And for example, on this map, we, can, we have Zinc and Campbell libraries overlapped on, on the map. And here, most of the map is actually in green or blue, blue color, which means that we have like around 50% of the uh, of both libraries present there. But does it actually mean that Campbell and Zinc has similar chemotypes, like exactly the same chemotypes? Well, actually, no. We can have a case when we have, like, each dot correspond for a compound. Here it's a schematic representation, and the curve here is our manifold. So we have some areas which actually, uh, which actually have not a lot of compounds. Of one library, this is very easy to analyze. However, when we go to, to the highly populated areas with a lot of compounds, that might be really complicated to analyze them and they collide all together and give us a, actually green color. So what can we do with it? We can actually select the uh, areas that are problematic, highly populated, and build completely new maps on those areas, uh, on, on compounds from those areas, and in such a way, we're going to have new maps with a better resolution, better class separation, and less compounds in, in each map. We can repeat this several times up to the moment when we will have reasonable number of compounds actually here. And we can do st some structural analysis on the last levels. So, for example, maximum common substructure in order to detect the compounds that are uh, specific to one library. For Campbell, for example, they are not present on the market. Uh, or to zinc, uh, specific to zinc molecules, they were not reported to be tested yet. So as you can see, GTM allows you to do really a lot of different stuff. So uh, visualization, analog search, property prediction, and, and, and so on and so on. And it also allows you to do it uh, for large data sets. So it, actually, it can be used to create the tools that will give you all these functionalities that we talked about at the beginning. And we call this tool ChemSpace Atlas. So it, can, it includes uh, large collections. So the largest one is Zinc Virtual, of course. After some filtration and data preparation, we got the data set of 800 million. And uh, to compare it with Campbell and with Coconut also for natural products space, we built um, around 40,000 generative topographic maps. Uh, on up to five levels, consequent level of zooming. And uh, it also allows us to, to do the biological profiling on 750 biological targets from Campbell and uh, uh, demonstrate the distribution of 20 different calculated properties like uh, molecular weight, uh, log P, etc. So it consists from several chapters uh, that were done during my PhD. So the first one is like biological activity analysis and prediction. You can scan your code to see the article details on how it was done. Uh, another one is uh, screening compounds where you can find drug-like, lead-like, fragment-like, and PPI-like subsets of Campbell and Zinc. And that allows you to compare them, to, to analyze, to see the properties, etc. And several uh, separate chapter was done for natural products because they occupy really different chemical space. And uh, uh, what is 
on ongoing uh, to be add to the atlas it's a building blocks uh, chemical space which was uh, done in a synton representation and uh, the encoded libraries so what does it what, what does we have there actually so we have a main map that can be colored according to different different properties so calculated properties biological activities commercial availability etc and we can it's it's always interactive and we can navigate through the hierarchy of the maps and we can on the last level of of this hierarchy when we have less than 1000 compounds we can actually uh, show the compound structures some scaffolds maximum common substructures and do some polypharmacological profiling for zinc compounds so to navigate this complex structure there are two ways to do this so first one is property-based navigation when we have in mind for example activity of a particular target and we want to go through this activity so we can go to the um, Campbell activity space navigator select the map for example uh, CDK4 target and then uh, just browse through the map it's interactive you select the area for example with which is red we contain in active compounds and you have information of how many compounds are uh, there, active synactive, so you can this, uh, you, you can visualize, you can see the structures, so you have links to go to the initial uh, data sets, uh, websites, you can download smiles, and also you can download scaffolds, uh, you can visualize scaffolds uh, specific to this area. Second way to do this is if we have a compound in mind or a chemotype in mind. So we take this compound, we can project it onto the manifold. On the website, we allow to, 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 to project up to 10 compounds uh, just in order to, uh, to be quick for the user. So 10 chem space trackers, we call them. So those compounds are going to be projected as dots on the, web, on, the webs, uh, on the maps. And then you can press on the dot see the compound itself, see the number of nearest neighbors on, the, on each level of, uh, of, of map, of zooming. And then you can uh, press on the button zoom if there is too many compounds and go uh, to the next level. And on the next level, again, you can visualize compounds, you can visualize maximum common substructure, scaffolds, and uh, uh, results of zinc uh, activity profiling. So to conclude, um, it's a, we developed a web-based uh, polyfunctional tool that allow you to go through, through the uh, hundreds of millions of compounds. And uh, it allows you to navigate and to analyze this complex chemical space with respect to different, uh, to different uh, contexts. So physical chemical properties, uh, activities, uh, etc. And you also can do the polypharmacological profiling here. So you can uh, go by the by the QR code to see the tool itself. And here there is a QR code to the demonstration video. It's also on, also on the website. Uh, so you can see how it's done an example of a penicillin molecule. And uh, uh, if you have uh, some extra questions after, uh, during the coffee break, I will be near my poster 37 so I can answer some of your questions. And talking about some further developments that can be done for ChemSpace Atlas. So basically we can add new libraries. This is the easy part. So we just project new compound collections like drug, uh, drug bank on, or PubChem, or uh, one uh, new library has been added. It's Chimiotech National. It was done by uh, Polina Alenieva, M2 student who I was supervising this year. Uh, she also has a poster on 34, I think, number. Uh, so we can also add new properties, so new targets, uh, for example, toxicity prediction or some ADME properties, uh, but this is a bit more complicated, you need to work on, on the models for that, and also new functionality uh, can, be, can be implemented uh, for IE-driven de novo design, where actually we can sample the map, so we have a map which shows you where, which regions are more interesting, so which regions have uh, active compounds, for example, you select this area and then you uh, can sample from this area new molecules that are going to be generated with different neural networks and they're going to be similar, they're going to have some similar uh, structural features and uh, hopefully properties also. So 
Um, this brings me to the end of my presentation. I would like to thank uh, everybody in the lab uh, of chemoinformatics here, especially my supervisors, Professor Alexander Varnigan. Uh, Dr. Dragos Horvat and uh, Dr. Fanny Bonashera, who developed the front end of the uh, of the tool of this uh, web-based interface. And of course, I would like to thank you for your attention. And if uh, you are on LinkedIn or Twitter, please uh, connect. Thank you.